Friends and supporters, good evening and a very warm welcome to the beautiful St Luke's Church and to our Battersea Carol Concert. There was a time, not so long ago, when we had no idea when we would be able to come together again like this. So it is particularly heartwarming to see so many of you here this evening to celebrate Christmas with us and to support our work at Battersea. Last year, we were forced to do things a little differently, and we launched and ran our first ever virtual carol concert, live on Facebook, no less. It was certainly a festive affair, but I miss sitting and singing under the roof of this wonderful church. Tonight, we have the best of both worlds, a full house here, and also a live broadcast of this event around the world on our YouTube channel as well and everyone is going to enjoy a programme that features tonight our special guest, Kirsty Gallagher. Thank you, Kirsty, very much for joining us. 
plus more of your favourite carols to sing along to and leaving nobody with any excuse at all to be stuck on mute this evening. This is the first carol concert that I've had the privilege of welcoming you all to as Battersea's Chief Executive. I am incredibly proud of everything that Battersea has achieved over the last 12 months to help dogs and cats everywhere. Our staff, as always, have been outstanding, working incredibly hard in very difficult circumstances to give our animals the love and the very best care that they deserve. 18 months ago, right at the start of this pandemic, my family and I adopted our first Battersea dog, a handsome ex-racing greyhound called Wilson. And a few weeks ago, I took Wilson back to Battersea to see his former home. And walking through the kennels, we bumped into Ricky, one of our kennel staff. And Ricky immediately recognised Wilson, and Rick, uh, Wilson recognised her too. And Ricky could remember how Wilson used to share his kennel with fellow greyhounds, Toby and Bella. She could remember how Wilson used to love chewing on a pig's ear treat every afternoon. And she used to remember how Wilson used to curl up on his king-sized duvet with his favourite teddy bear at Lights Out each evening. Many hundreds of dogs and cats pass through our three centres every year, but our staff remember the individuals they look after. They form a bond, a true connection with every single one. For our staff, it is so much more than just a job. And that commitment to every dog and cat is what makes Battersea such a special place. Our trustees and volunteers, they too have been absolutely wonderful. They've brought so much expertise and have given up so much of their time to help guide and support Battersea through this year. Together, we've helped thousands of animals who've needed us and that would otherwise have faced an uncertain future. I know you can't wait to meet some of the four-legged stars of the show and hear their stories. And I'm pleased to say that Seamus and Dash and, and friends are in the green room right now and will be up on stage very shortly. <laughs> This year, we've also been working tirelessly to change laws. Our campaign succeeded in bringing in tougher prison sentences for the very worst animal cruelty offences, giving all animals in this country better protection for decades to come. We've been training and supporting other rescue organisations across Britain and around the world through our groundbreaking academy. And we've helped hundreds of thousands of owners stay connected with their pets through our online advice, our behaviour support line, and our online dog training classes. Even dogs know how to jump on a Zoom call now. <laughs> but of course, our work at Battersea is never done. While we'll all be heading home to our warm houses this evening, there are still many dogs and cats with nowhere yet to call home. <laughs> he agrees. If you'd like to bring and help us bring more dogs and cats in from the cold, there is certainly still time. Once we've sung our hearts out this evening and enjoyed some festive readings, please take part in our raffle and our online auction. Details of both are in your programmes. I did spot that one of the raffle prizes tonight, six bottles of Bollinger champagne, guaranteed to make someone's Christmas day go with a bang, and they could be yours. So please do give and bid, if you can, on your way to the mulled wine and mince pies that we'll be serving at the end of the service a little bit later on. Or maybe open your purses and your wallets after the wine. That could be even better still. <laughs> but most importantly, thank you. Thank you to you all for your ongoing support. Thank you for coming out this evening. Thank you for everything you do to support Battersea. We have a special event for you this evening. I know you're going to love it. I want to wish you all a very happy and healthy Christmas. And on that note, let our celebrations begin in earnest. Thank you. Wait, 
me. Good lad. Well done. Hello everyone. I'm Natalie and I'm one of the canine behaviour and training managers at our London Centre and it's a real privilege to be here with you all this evening. March 2020, I think we all remember it very well. The start of the pandemic that has affected everyone around the world. But as the world changed, Battersea remained here to ensure that everyone, every animal but that needed us, that we were there for them, that no animal was left behind. For the first time in Battersea's history since 1860, we were closed to the public. Our centres were extremely quiet. Animal numbers across all three centres were hugely reduced. We went from 400 to just 85 on site, and we are hugely grateful to all of our foster carers as 160 animals were very quickly placed in foster homes. Seamus, you're not joining the choir. You're supposed to be showing people <laughs> what you're doing. There you go. Through it all, Batsy's staff, now key workers, remained on site to help all those animals that needed us and also to be there for those owners that needed us the most. While we were still taking in emergency cases, restrictions led, us, led to less animals being able to be brought into us. We had to change how we worked. We went out and we collected those animals that needed our help. We also received few inquiries from owners seeking to give up their dogs and cats, which for once was very nice. It was clear that public demand for pets was rising and many people are now spending a lot of time at home were really enjoying the company that those animals could bring them. We responded by the surge in demand by working hard to champion rescue as the place to get a dog or cat from. Um, and I'm sure that he is going to show off how amazing rescue is shortly as well. <laughs> Inevitably, a year later, when life started to return to normal for a lot of people, things started to change. We started seeing an increase in the number of animals that needed our help and that could no longer be looked after by their owners. We will never turn away a dog or cat that needs our help. Based on breed, age, condition or any other factor, we're there for every single one of them that needs us. And we're very, very proud of our intake policy. It makes us hugely different from lots of charities and it's really what we're here for. We want to be able to give every single animal the care and attention that they need, no matter what. And I'm sure you're all desperate to know now about little Seamus here, <laughs> who's probably stolen the show already. Um, he is one of our most recent intake cases. So he came in to us earlier this week, on Tuesday in fact. Um, and he is a classic example of the sorts of animals that we sometimes get in. Um, he's a young puppy. He's only five months old. And he was bought by his owners. And as he's grown up, he's become very lively. And as life has become bigger and um, more busy, um, he doesn't fit in anymore. And they don't have the experience or the time that's needed for him. I know some of you saw him earlier on fast asleep. I can guarantee that's not what he's like normally. <laughs> um, so he's come into us, and obviously we've taken him in. And he is currently on foster. I won't lie, I've taken him home myself <laughs> to look after him. And he will stay with me and we'll do some training. And he hopefully should be going to his new home soon once clinic and everyone have given him the once over. So um, there's lots of dogs that need new homes at Battersea and lots of cats. And he's just one of the many. But anyway, thank you very much. Have a lovely evening. <laughs> How do you doing? Yeah? <laughs>
fears I was going to break that. <laughs> um, hi, my name's Bridie. I'm the cat rehoming team leader. I'm afraid I don't have a cat with me today because I couldn't talk any of the cats into coming with me, especially in a room full of dogs. Um, but I'm going to tell you a bit about clinic over the last sort of year or so. Um, so throughout the pandemic, the Battersea Clinic staff continued to provide emergency care and support for animals in urgent need. After switching to emergency only surgeries throughout the initial weeks of the pandemic, we were really lucky because we could then start doing standard surgical operations pretty quickly at both our London and Old Windsor clinics. We were in such a fortunate position that it meant that we could actually support other charities during these uncertain times. So we used our theatre and our wonderful expert veterinary team to help treat surgical cases for the Blue Cross. The charity brought in 19 dogs to our London set, sorry, Centre for Veterinary Treatment in the two weeks before London went into Tier 4 lockdown. If there wasn't already enough going on, we also had a lot of work going on, development to improve and grow our facilities, and that was at all three centres. Um, the aim for that is to ensure that we can provide the very best care for the animals that come into Battersea every day. In Battersea, London, a really exciting new addition as part of the major developments was a state-of-the-art hydrotherapy suite. It's amazing watching the dogs use this. It's got a pool, underwater treadmill, and so it's designed to provide our animals with additional exercise opportunities to meet their medical, emotional, and physical needs. But every animal that comes into Battersea, they all receive a full health check upon arrival to identify any issues and plan any necessary treatments they might need. Sadly, we do see some animals and they arrive to us in a very sorry state and they actually require a lot of medical attention and it can take a prolonged period of time for them to be ready for rehoming. So one of our current clinic patients, he's amazing, um, he's been with us for a considerable amount of time. His name's Hector, he's just a young kitten. I have been assured he will be watching this evening on the live stream, so hello Hector, and thank you for letting me share your story. Um, so he was found in July and he was a stray, and he was brought into Battersea, but he was only six weeks old. So he was assessed by the clinic team and it was immediately clear that this poor boy, he had a deformed tail and a missing back part of his leg. Um, the good news was he didn't appear to be in pain and the clinic team thought that it was probably due to a birth defect rather than actual injury. But the bad news was for Hector that due to the shape of the stump where the fourth leg should have been, it could have meant that down the line he could have had considerable issues. So this meant that the best option for him in the long run was to remove the leg completely. So he was just a few weeks old, so he was much too young to have that sort of surgery. So thankfully, one of our brilliant Battersea members of staff offered to take in the little kitten and has had him on foster until he was old enough for surgery, which I'm delighted to say that he has now had. Um, he's still resting up in his foster home until he's all ready and better, but hopefully he might have a new forever home for Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a great pleasure for us to be here again this year um, and supporting this, this wonderful event. And it's so nice to be back in a packed church rather than a cramped TV studio as I was um, this time last year and to hear everybody singing. Um, so thank you all for coming. Um, Good King Wenceslas, so we're going to do it in a slightly different way. We're going to do it without any organ and we're going to do it in canon, which means that this side of the church is going to start Four notes later, that side of the church is going to join in, okay? It should mean that we just keep on going until we get to the end. Um, there's a couple of things that you need to know before, uh, that I think we should just practice before we, um, before we start. So, could I have a G major chord? Um, when we get to the end of a verse, um, you have to keep it, keep it going in time or else the whole thing falls apart. So, it goes like this. When a poor man came in sight Gathering winter fuel Hear the page and stand by me Like that. 
Okay. So could we just practice that? So the last two lines of verse one going into verse two. Here we go. After two, one, two. When a poor man came inside, gathering winter fuel, hear the page and stand by me. Brilliant. Fantastic. You've got it. Um, that's the really crucial thing. Now, there's a couple of other things. We all take the part of the, nar the narrator. It's, it's written in your programme. The men take the part of the king. Um, women take the part of the page. OK? Um, yeah, I know. It's a bit old-fashioned, isn't it? But there we go. Right. Um, The other, the other thing to say is that when you're singing, you should stand up, and when you're not singing, you should sit down. OK? And the, the beginning goes like this. So this, this side starts, good king went us, good king, like that. OK? Shall we give it a go? So we're all singing at the start, so please stand up. OK, here goes. After two, please. One, two. Good King Wences, Good King Wences, last look at us on the feast of spring. We celebrate when the sun went down the grass and he and Chris ran. Where we shall run, where we shall run, where the grass is blue. And thus was green, who were the king of song. Where we shall run, where we will shall run. Give her page, give her page. I was enjoying that. Brilliant. Well done. Thank you very much indeed. That was brilliant. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Kirsty Gallagher. Thank you very much for having me and my family this evening. Um, I'm a very good friend of Battersea. It's a very special night for me because I'm a huge animal lover anyway. Um, and six years ago, which is quite amazing, I can't believe it's that long, I adopted, my family adopted Betsy, a British bulldog who'd come in to Windsor, Battersea, near where we live. Um, I won't go into it. She was a wreck. It was very sad. Uh, I'd had bulldogs before, so they gave me a call knowing that I sort of knew the breed. And um, it was 
a real journey. It's been a really incredible journey. She is six years on, amazing. Um, I can't tell you. She's so happy. She's so healthy. Obviously, she's so loved. Battersea, thank you so much to your staff. You are incredible. We work really hard together um, to get her back to some kind of place where she deserves you know, a normal life because she didn't, and it was a very sad tale before that. So the good news is, as I say, six years on, she is wonderful. And the work you guys do, thank you very much indeed. And if I say any more, I'll get very emotional. So uh, I'm going to do my reading now, but it's, it's very special for me to be here. So thank you and happy Christmas. I'm going to do a reading the night before Christmas by Clement Clark Moore, but of course adapted by Battersea Dogs and Cats Home. "'Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the home, "'not a feline was stirring, no paws on the roam. "'The stockings were hung by the kennels with care, "'in hopes that St Bernard soon would be there. <laughs> yeah. "'The dogs were nestled all snug in their beds "'while visions of pig ears danced in their heads, "'and me and my kennel snuggled up on a lap. "'I just settled down for a long winter's nap. "'When out in the paddocks there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the lock and threw up the latch. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should I see but a miniature poodle and a pack of huskies? <laughs> With a wise old leader trotting through the yard, I knew in a moment it must be St. Bernard. More rapid than greyhounds, his courses they came, and he barked and yapped and called them by name. Now Archie, now Digby, now Pongo and Charlie, on Fido, on Rover, on Buddy and Marley, to the top of the cattery, to the top of the track. Now dash away, dash away, dash away, pack. Pounding the pavements of the Battersea streets, they mount to the sky when an obstacle they meet. So up the house top, the hounds, they all flew with the sleigh full of treats, of course, and St. Bernard too. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the floor the prancing and patter of each little paw. As I drew in my tail and was turning around, down the chimney, St. Bernard appeared with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his snout was all tarnished with ashes and soot. A sack full of treats he'd flung on his back, and he looked just like a wolf leading his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his tail wagging, how merry, his whiskers like feathers, his nose like a cherry, his drooling mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the fluff of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a branch he held tight in his teeth, and the leaves they encircled his head like a wreath. He had a wet nose and a large round belly, that shook when he barked like a bowl full of jelly. He was fluffy and plump, a right jolly old boy, and I smiled when I saw him. The sight filled me with joy. A blink of his eyes and a tilt of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He barked not a sound, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings and turned with a jerk. He jumped up and licked me as I nuzzled his head and giving a nod, up the chimney he sped. He sprang to his sleigh and gave a bark to his pack, and away they all flew, they never looked back. But then I heard him howl, much to my delight. Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Battersea is not just committed to helping dogs and cats, but also supporting pet owners in any way that we can. In response to the challenges of the pandemic, we made sure that we were on hand to give advice to the public in any way that we could. As well as our dedicated dog and cat behaviour advice line being set up, 
Lots of new online tips and advice were also created for pet owners to access from their homes. This allowed us to continue supporting many thousands of new and less experienced dog and cat owners through a potentially very difficult time. With the increase in puppies being brought throughout the pandemic, we wanted to be there to help with their introduction to the world. We decided to launch online training courses to support a new generation of puppy owners, many of whom were missing out on the normal opportunities to socialize their new pets with other humans and dogs as a consequence of lockdown. And we saw people joining from all over the world, um, as far away as Africa as well. Across our three centers, there is a large team of behavioral experts that work with both our dogs and cats. As well as supporting animals and their owners remotely, they also work very, very closely with the kennel and cattery staff to help assess the animals in our care. They work together to put plans in place to get the dogs and cats to the best position to go to their new homes with skills and behaviors that will help them thrive. These plans can vary from sometimes very basic training and enrichment to more in-depth work on additional challenging issues. And back in 2019, an energetic young Labrador cross called Dash, not so energetic right now, <laughs> arrived at Battersea. <laughs> Dash was found as a stray um, at only two years old. He was very lucky to be looked after by our dedicated kennel staff and training team. He is a prime example of how the work our team do um, can help channel his energy. Um, so we have really helped him flourish now in his new home with Jenny. We did lots of trick training to keep his brain working as he was very active. He had lots of food toys and puzzles to keep him stimulated and engaged, and obviously lots of exercise as well, being a young Labrador to help burn off all of that excitement. And this really helped him to settle down. One month after arriving at Battersea, he was rehomed by the lovely Jenny. And what is absolutely wonderful is that Jenny has continued all of that training with Dash, and he's now a very busy boy. As well as supporting Battersea um, and attending events such as this one tonight, he is also working towards his champion and grand champion trick dog trials, which I'm sure, given the lovely demonstration here tonight, he'll do very, very well with. So let's give the lovely Dash, star of the show, a big round of applause. <laughs> Good boy. Well done. Okay, off we go.
Hi everyone. Uh, my name's Ali Taylor and I'm head of the Canine and Behaviour and Training Department. But I'm here to talk to you about rehoming. I'm just going to show you guys. This is Betty and this is little Olive. This is Betty Taylor, also known as Elizabeth. <laughs> just so you know it. We're really extremely lucky at Battersea because we all find our work really, really rewarding. Doesn't matter what department we work for, our job means the most to us. Uh, I've been extremely lucky because I've been at Battersea coming on to nearly 30 years. So, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I only said that so I'd get a better applaud than Dash. <laughs> But there's no better reward than to see a dog or cat get a new home. And honestly, it gives you butterflies when you see them um, go out the home to, you know, a new family and they get that second opportunity in life. Um, and especially when you've seen them go through so much when they've come in. So they've had clinic work or they've had behaviour work. And then they almost have that little glimpse back at you as they're going to their new home. It gives the biggest smile and it is the biggest reward that any of us working at Battersea could get. So thank you for anyone that has taken on one of our animals or any rescue dog. Um, it really does mean a lot. Well, now we'll go back to the pandemic, which is a little bit of a feature. And it was a really difficult time. What we did find was there were so many more people that did want dogs and cats, which was said earlier. It, you know, it was for company, it was for a number of things. Um, and it became quite challenging. How do we rehome our pets when the public can't come into us? We did panic a little bit. Um, but we were extremely lucky because you know, there's, there's, there's Zoom. We managed to do things online, so we still had virtual intros, um, which was quite hilarious, really. There would be people contacting us for a, a dog, and we would have to show them online what it was doing, what it looked like, how it acted, and everything else. The other part of what we did as well was we delivered animals. So we knew people couldn't come to us, so therefore, we would put an animal in one of our vehicles and we were bringing them to them, obviously in masks and everything else that we required. I've got two dogs with me today, but some of you will probably know our rehoming process. It's a little bit like blind date. We put all of the dogs and cats information in, we put the person's information into the system and it comes up with matches matches exactly honestly it is like blind day I, i'm so lucky i've got five dogs at home they keep sort of like giving me more and more i keep getting all of these animals that they keep saying they're they're a match they're a match um i'm quite bad at my job um i must admit um one of the worst things is don't give me a dog to foster because i do end up keeping them and here we have two dogs just so that i can go through how they came in. So this is little Betty. Now Betty came in, um, she came in via the owner. Now she was gifted in at one day old, but there were six of them and there was a, a really valid reason why she came in. Sadly, her mother died um, giving birth. So the owner didn't actually know what to do. So therefore they came in um, to be hand reared. So I've had Betty from one day old um, and I hand reared her and she's 12 um, years old now. Um, Adrian, who's one of our amazing volunteers, um, brings Betty to the Chelsea Pensioners. <laughs> and Betty has been going to the Chelsea Pensioners from a puppy, um, which you know yourself. I just want to prove something though. I thought I would prove it tonight because obviously 
I've had Betty for 12 years from one day old, and I know she's going to be extremely loyal. <laughs> so loyal that I believe she's in love with me. She would never go to anyone else. I just know that. So I'm just going to prove a point to Nat Ingham. She loves Nat so much. <laughs> from one day old is. <laughs> so, well, that's had it. I'm not doing any more. That's it. This little dog here, this is Olive. Um, Olive came in, her mum came in as a stray, and her mum was in a really, really bad way. Um, she had a lot of skin issues um, and a lot of things going wrong with the mother, but she gave birth at Windsor. We didn't even know that she was pregnant. She, it, it all happened so fast. Um, and we had 11 puppies. Um, and Olive was one of them. And the reason why she ended up um, with me, <laughs> I fostered her. <laughs> I just want to let you know, I have fostered a lot of dogs. I don't keep all of them. But I just thought I'd give you these two stories. Um, obviously, they come in two different ways, but there's nothing better than working at Battersea, and there's nothing better than seeing all you people here today and for you supporting the work that we do. So I just want to say a big Merry Christmas to you all, and thank you so much for everything that you do for us. <laughs>
Wow. <laughs> well, I think you'll all agree we're well and truly in the festive spirit now. I have the absolute honour and privilege to be Chair of Trustees of this amazing organisation. Uh, and my job this evening is a very important one. It's to say thank you to all of those that have made this evening possible. First, a very, very big thank you to Royal Canin uh, for proudly supporting and sponsoring this concert this evening. Next, a very special thank you to St. Luke's, St. Luke's Church for hosting us. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it amazing? <laughs> Wonderful. And of course, our fantastic choir, the Collegium Musicum of London Choral Choir. Thank you so much, please. And we mustn't forget our organist, Rupert Jeffcoat. Before you all head off this evening, we'd love for you to join us outside for a cup of mulled wine and a mince pie, and they've been kindly donated by Town & Country Fine Foods. Bringing everyone together this evening to celebrate Christmas with Battersea, wouldn't have happened without our incredible, dedicated staff and volunteers. A very special thank you to all of them, not just the ones stood here, but the ones who've been working tirelessly behind the scenes to make this evening happen. Last, but by no means least, a heartfelt thank you to all of you for coming here this evening to support us. Without your support, we couldn't continue to be here for dogs and cats everywhere, giving more animals the second chance that they deserve. Please continue your support beyond this evening by helping us to promote rescue through our campaign, Wear Blue for Rescue. You can buy, wear, share and donate and let everyone know that rescue is our nation's favourite breed. <laughs> to, don to donate this evening, please use the donation envelope in your programmes uh, or the QR code uh, to donate online or maybe just pop some money in the bucket or make a card payment on your way out this evening. And please don't forget to go online to make your bids in the Battersea Christmas auction. There are some great prizes in there and the details are in your program. So finally, from myself, from everyone at Battersea, two-legged and four-legged, <laughs> a very Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, thank you and good night. <laughs>